Hello, I'm Samantha and I'll be your host on today's webinar. Today we'll learn how to manipulate text, files and folders using Winotomation. Winotomation contains a fair amount of options for manipulating files and folders as well as perform any kind of text processing as you can see here. Also, Winotomation can monitor the computer's file system using the file monitor trigger. You can see that one here. using the file monitor trigger for files being created, changed, deleted or renamed and files jobs on demand accordingly. During this webinar we'll examine how one can automatically generate HTML pages automatically which are nothing more than text files. Let's assume that you need to create a bunch of HTML files containing data that you have stored in either a database, text file, CSV or any other form. For today's scenario we'll assume that we have all data within a text file. And from this file we want to be able to create a um, web page that looks more or less like this. As we can see the HTML file contains a title, some text and an image. The HTML source behind the page also contains some keywords in the metadata section. You can see that there. The, and the reference to two external files the image file down here as well as the CSS file up here. This means that during the web page generation we need to copy the two files into the same directory where the HTML file is uh, being, uh, where, the, where is it? That one there. Where the HTML file is being created. The source data for this web page creation comes from a simple text file. This text file was used to create this HTML page and uh, we can see that it contains the meta keys, you see that here, meta keys, um, the main text up here, uh, the link and obviously the image path. So what we want to do in the job is uh, we want to create a uh, in the job we shall create is read the, th the contents from the text file and use them to generate our web page. To make things a bit more interesting we shall define that we want a web page to be generated whenever a text file appears in a specific directory. For this we shall be making use of the file monitor trigger. So uh, we've created our job and um, we've added a trigger to it the file monitor trigger and uh, what we will be doing is we want to define that we want to uh, monitor any text files coming into this folder here, see my files, uh, any text files created. So I'll add here .txt. So this will be monitoring any txt files coming within the see my files. Okay, I'll close it. So at this point if I generate a new txt file here we will see that the job will run. We open the job in the job designer mode and we start building a job. The first thing we want to do is grab the contents of the file that triggered the job, but how do we get that information? The file monitor trigger defines specific variables and we can access that information from the trigger variables panel. Um, here we can see that uh, the variables defined uh, for the file monitor trigger are these ones here. From the description we can understand that the file trigger file path is the one that we are actually after since that one holds the full path for the uh, file that triggered our job. Okay, so our first action will be the read text from file action where we will read the contents of the file trigger file path. Let's create that one, read text from file and we will enter here file trigger file path. Okay, which is the variable that holds the full path to our file. As we previously demonstrated, uh, we can see here that our um, text file contains specific information on its line, so we'll make use of that and define that we want to read the contents of our file and treat it as a list. So uh, having done so, uh, we will then um, save the information retrieved into the source data variable which will be a list type variable. Okay. 
At this point, just for the sake of uh, clarity and readability, and to make things easier to understand, we shall store each item of the list into a different variable to carry a reference name to help us identify its contents. This I will be doing using the set uh, variable action. So each item of the list can be retrieved just by defining its index. So uh, what I will be doing here is defining that the source data, and since I want the first item of my list, uh, which is the number zero, since lists are zero based, um, the source data zero will be my uh, root folder. So what I will do is I will name the variable web page root folder. which will hold the path in which I will be creating the new folder. Okay. Uh, same wise, I can copy and paste the action using Control c Control v And uh, what I will be doing is I will say I want the source data 1, which is the second item on my list, to be the variable that will hold the name for the folder and for the page as well. Okay. Same wise, I'll do that the same thing for the next item on the list. And that will be my keyword. And we can see here 0, 1, 2. That's the third line, which is index 2. OK. Doing the same thing for the text. We can see here that our text is delimited using paragraph marks, which we will be using later on in the job. OK. Doing the same thing for the link. Cool. And we're just naming the items accordingly. OK. And the last item would be the image. So we'll save the web page image in a different variable. OK. At this point, the real processing begins. So what we want to do is we want our job to create a folder for the web page. The name of the folder shall be the name of the page. So we'll be using the create folder action. And we will be creating the new folder within the web page root folder as I previously defined. OK. And the folder name, as I previously said, would be the, uh, the name of the site. So that would be the second line of my text file. So that's web page name. OK. The information of the newly created folder will be stored in the new folder variable here. OK. At this point, we want to copy the, into the newly created folder the related files. That would be the CSS file as well as the image file. For the CSS file, it's a standard path for all our jobs. So we know that the path would be directly within our web page template. So what I'll do is I'll use the copy files action and I'll define that I want to copy the uh, style.css file and my destination folder would be the newly created folder so I'll select here new folder okay I will be copying the image file as well so I'll use another copy files action and this time I will be selecting the web page image variable that holds the whole path as we can see here to the image file. The destination folder once again will be the new folder. Okay. Having done so, uh, we can now uh, we now have all the variables we need in order to create the HTML file. We do have all the information. Um, we can see here that this is where each variable should go into the code to generate the new code, the new file. So here is where we are actually adding the lorem ipsum, which is our page's uh, name. And this is where our keyword should be going. This is the title once again. Um, this is where our paragraphs should be going, down here. Here we have the, um, the image file that we should replace, and this is our link. So uh, having done so, this is the code that we should be adding within the write text to file action that should follow. However, to make things a bit more interesting, we shall be adding some new requirements. To start with, let's say that we want our job to append a new title in capital letters whenever 
uh, within the text file, even if the uh, title is in small letters. To do that, we will use a tint text case action. You can find that one under the text actions here. Uh, where is it? Mm, change text case. Okay. And as I said before, we want to change the web page name and convert it to uppercase so that we can use it in the title. Okay. The new value is also saved in the title variable so that we can distinguish it from the web page name when we create our HTML file later on. Okay. So if we're here, then now we can now say that that would be title. Okay. Now, adding to the requirements, we can see here that the paragraphs in the text file are separated using paragraph marks, as we previously said as well. What we want to do is we want to replace these paragraph marks with HTML tags to define the paragraph, each paragraph. One way to do this would be to replace the paragraph marks with the corresponding opening and closing tags, so that would be P opening and P closing. But in the but what we'll do is uh, we will be appending prior and after each paragraph once we've separated the paragraphs between them using the paragraph mark as a custom separator. But let's check it out how we'll do that in action. We will be using the split text action so that we can uh, separate our paragraphs. The page to be splitting, the text to be splitting will be the web page text. Okay. And we will be using a custom delimiter. The custom delimiter will be the paragraph mark. So I'll copy that one from there and paste it there. So the output variable will be a list that will hold each one item, each one paragraph found within the web page text. So I'll call that one paragraphs list. OK. So the output variable will be a list, and each item in this paragraph will be um, will be found in the paragraphs list. All we want to do now is pre-append and append the opening and closing tags at the beginning and at the end of its paragraph and merge it with the rest of the paragraphs. To do this, we'll have to iterate through the items of the list and uh, that would be through the paragraphs list. We can do that using the for each loop action and we will be iterating through the paragraphs list. Through the iteration, each paragraph will be accessible through the current paragraph list variable. Okay. To grab all the formatted paragraphs into one text, we shall be using the append line to text action and we will be placing it between the within the for each and end loop set of actions. So during the iterations, each paragraph will be added to the new paragraph, to the new variable called paragraphs. And the line to be appended will be the formatting and the current paragraph, current list paragraph, with the formatting it again. So during the iterations, each paragraph will be added to our new variable paragraphs along with its formatting. And once the uh, loop is, uh, has gone through each paragraph, we will then have one text, a text type variable that will hold all the paragraphs that have also have all the formatting in between. Okay. Current paragraph list. Okay. It's also very helpful if we type in the variable names correctly. <laughs> okay. So, um, now adding to our requirements, um, once we have actually created the paragraphs and we've separated them into formatted paragraphs, we now want to um, be able to add the title tag of the image to display the name of the image but without its extension so that whenever someone hovers over the image, we will also be able to see the name of the image. It's essential at this point that we also make sure that we grab the file name alone of the image since we do not need to specify its full path within the HTML file 
since all the files will be located within the same directory as the HTML file. So to retrieve that information, we will be making use of the get file path part action, where we will define the action that holds the image. And what we want to have is the file name as well as the file name with no extension to be used for different oops, both to be used for different causes. So the file name here will be used to um, will be used to replace that one there. And the title, the file name with no extension, will be used at this point here. Okay, so once we've done so, once we have all the information we want, we're now ready to create our HTML file. For this, we will be making use of the write text to file action. Okay, um, to specify the path where the file will be created, we need three parts. The folder where the, uh, where the page will be created, that would be the new folder, as we previously defined it followed by the web page name plus the extension .html to create our new HTML file. We concatenate the three values by writing the one after the other. You'll notice here that instead of using one backslash, we're using a double backslash. This is due to the fact that the single backslash in mean automation when entered before a percentage symbol is used to disable it and it gives us a literal percentage symbol. Same-wise, to get the literal backslash, we have to use a double backslash. Okay, so what I've done here is I have made a note of all the um, variables that will be used to replace our actual test. So we can see that one here. And uh, having done so, we can then move on to the next page where I've actually written all the code without the comments. So what I'll do is I'll copy this information here and I will be saving it, importing it into my text to write in my write text to file action and press OK. So uh, once we've uh, finished with our uh, files processing, uh, we can now move on this file into the file that we've been processing and that has created our HTML file into our processed files folder. So to do that, we'll be using the move files action and we will be moving the uh, file trigger file path which as you remember is the file that triggered our job initially and we will be moving it into my files processed. Okay, so the job now is complete so I'll just save it and close it and I will now drag and drop a sample file within my uh, my files which is our incoming uh, folder for all the files that I want to create an HTML file for. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll drag and drop it and we can see that the job begins to run. The job has completed and to navigate now to my web pages I'll see the hello world where I can see three folders within it, three files within it, sorry. My image file, the CSS file as well as the HTML file, where it says now more or less the same with the previous job, with the previous site. So, this concludes our webinar for text, files and folder manipulation. Thank you very much for attending everyone. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.